Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon will be the gospel reading that we just heard. If there's one thing that becomes obvious the more you read the Holy Scriptures, it is that God, God just loves to feed people. He hates to see his children go hungry. He's like a mother who's always checking to see if we've got enough to eat. He keeps putting more and more food on our plate than we could possibly ever stuff into our mouths. It's been like this from the beginning. The first thing that he shows Adam and Eve is the food pantry in the Garden of Eden. Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with its seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And in the background, although you don't hear this in the Holy Scriptures, you can imagine the angels chanting from heaven, manja, manja, at least the Italian angels. When Jacob couldn't feed his family because of a famine, God put Joseph in charge of the food supply in Egypt so Joseph would have food enough to feed his whole family. As the children got bigger, they got harder to feed. Seventy people went down to Egypt with Jacob to eat. Two million people left Egypt to return to the land God had promised through Abraham which is described in nothing other than culinary terms, a land flowing with milk and honey. Along the way, the people got hungry. It takes a lot of food to satisfy two million people with an appetite, and especially those teenagers. The land can't support that kind of demand, and the locals get a little stingy about sharing their bread with two million transients just passing through. The children begin to complain, and God hears their growling bellies and has compassion on them. That word compassion, in the New Testament Greek, it's splagnizo, has a lot to do with the belly, the spleen. It literally means to have an ache in the gut. In this case, it's God's belly that is growling with love and pity for his hungry people. He feeds them with bread from heaven. It sounds rather miraculous, I know, but really, all of our food comes from heaven. It comes from God to us, and we should be thankful to him for it all. But most of all, it comes to us from God through natural processes that involve tilling the ground, planting the seed, growing the grain, harvesting, milling, baking, and so forth. But in the desert, where you don't have any of these things, God skips the natural process and feeds his people supernaturally. And not just bread either. Although there, that would have been enough, but with God, there is always more than enough. There's meat to eat, too. Quail fall from the sky. All you do is gather them up, roast them over a fire, and enjoy with a little red wine. Bread and meat, all you can eat every day for free. The only exception and the only expectation is that when you're all said and done, you say, thank you, Lord. There's an interesting little account from the book of 2 Kings that I came across recently about the prophet Elijah it has to do with this text before us. There was a famine in the land and the prophet Elijah came to Gilgal where there was a seminary for prophets. The students were all hungry and so Elijah prepares a big pot of stew for them all. But one of them thinks that he's going to be helpful, and he gathers some herbs from the field to throw into the pot, not knowing that they were actually poisonous plants. He throws them into the pot, and the stew is inedible. Elijah then throws in some flour and says, manja, manja, and it's all good. 
But here's the interesting part of this account. Just as he does so, a man shows up from a nearby village with 20 loaves of barley bread for Elijah. Elijah tells the man to pass it around to all of the prophets. And the man says, how can I set this before a hundred men? So Elijah repeated, give them to the men that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. So he set it before them and they ate and they had some left, according to the word of the Lord. 2 Kings 4, if you want to check it out. And God in his heaven laughs and he says, that was fun. I should do that again sometime. Which brings us to our gospel for today. This time one greater than Elijah is present and this time there are 50 times the number of hungry men on hand as were present with Elijah plus women and children. And this time Jesus has only a quarter of the bread to work with as Elijah had. Jesus' disciples want to solve the problem of hunger by simply dismissing the crowd. This is a desolate place the day is now over, send the crowds away to go into the villages to buy food for themselves. As if that were actually the compassionate thing to do. But Jesus replies, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. The disciples can only see the impossibility of the situation. They said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. Jesus can only see the hunger in this crowd of empty bellies. And he has real compassion for them. Five loaves and two fish are nothing when it comes to a crowd of this size. But this Lord knows how to turn nothing into plenty, even everything out of nothing. He said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. And then he broke the loaves and he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and they all ate and were satisfied and they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces left over. And the Father in heaven laughs, and his delight fills all of the heavens. And he says, I haven't had this much fun since yesterday when I fed the whole world. It may seem a bit strange to us that with all of the huge issues that God has to deal with, like keeping the stars and the planets in their place, and making sure that the seas come no further than they should, and directing the governments of the world and the ruling powers of this world to do what they ought to do, that this God should also be so involved as with something so mundane as providing daily bread. And yet, when Jesus teaches his disciples how they should pray, rather than directing us to pray for all of the big issues of our day, Jesus says, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Which is not to say that we shouldn't pray to our Father in heaven for all those big things like good government, a cure for cancer, and peace in the world. But let's just think about it for a minute. How would we ever learn to trust in God to provide for all of those big things, the big issues of our life, if we don't also look to him and trust him for the most basic necessity of our everyday life, such as daily bread. So the psalmist teaches us how to pray before we eat, saying, the eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in proper time. You open your hand, and you satisfy the desire of every living thing.
And yet, our hunger is not just about our belly, is it? It's not just bellies that growl because they are empty. Hearts growl also. And they need to be fed too, or they will also starve. We can spend big bucks on the healthiest foods and still hunger and thirst for righteousness, which is just what the prophet Isaiah was saying in our Old Testament reading. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Incline your ear and come to me here that your soul may live. How often does your heart growl with guilt or regret or sorrow or despair or loneliness or meaninglessness? How often do we hunger and thirst for peace and contentment and some real joy in our life? We long to be satisfied we incline our ear to so many different things, all kinds of voices believing that this one or that one or the other one will solve our hungry heart, but that leave us so unsatisfied, even more empty than we were. Simply put, our problem is we try to satisfy our hungry hearts with junk food that doesn't satisfy our heart, just like we eat junk food that doesn't satisfy our belly. God showed Adam all the trees in the garden that were good for food. But the devil, who always tries to imitate God, showed them what he claimed was good for food, but which was actually junk food of the worst kind. The same thing still happens to this day. The devil is so cunning and clever in his promises to give us just what we need to be satisfied. And we, just like Adam and Eve, keep eating it up because it is so darn pleasing to the eye. It may be devil's food, but it's our favorite cake and we love to eat it. Why do you spend your money why do you spend your time? Why do you spend your devotion? Why do you fix your eyes and your ears and your labor on that which does not satisfy? Thankfully, thanks be to God, thankfully, there is one man who is not fooled by the devil's diet, a second Adam, if you will, and his name is Jesus. Recall that episode when Jesus is in the wilderness just like Israel was and just like the 5,000 were in the wilderness. And he's hungry with a 40-day hung, hungry growling in his belly. And the devil comes to him and offers to satisfy his hunger with what else? Bread. Turn these stones into bread. But Jesus knows that though this may satisfy his belly for a moment, his soul would be forever starved of the one who alone can fill it with true satisfaction. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is the Lord who knows what it is like to have a hungry belly and a hungry heart and who sees you in your hunger and thirst for peace, for real hope, for genuine righteousness, who hears your cries for just a crumb of relief, just a scrap of comfort, just a taste of forgiveness. This Lord sees you and has compassion on you, and he comes to you, to feed you with the very bread of life that comes down from heaven, 
He sets a table before you that is overflowing with the finest meat and the choicest wine, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. It doesn't seem like much, I know. How could so little satisfy a hunger and a thirst so great as ours? But it can, and it will, if you will let it. More forgiveness, more mercy, more grace, more peace than you can gorge yourself on. So much that there will be baskets full of leftovers for you to gather up and to share with others. Today here in this wilderness, your Lord has compassion on you and he satisfies your hunger not with 20 loaves or even five loaves, but with one loaf, his very body from which we all eat. From his nail-scarred hands, he feeds you today with all of the forgiveness and the mercy and the peace and the joy that our hungry hearts can hold. And as if that were, and as it was there in that wilderness, so it is here in this wilderness. They all ate and were satisfied and they took 12 baskets full of broken pieces left over. Here again in this meal, enough left over to take home and share with others. There will come a day when all this kind of eating and drinking will come to its end. A day when all hunger and thirst will be gone forever. For the children of God, at least. St. John sees the end that awaits us in his revelation and he says, never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. And there in that place at that time, will be Adam and Eve who took the devil's advice and ate the forbidden fruit, eating and drinking from the hand of him who refused to eat the devil's food. And Jacob and his family of 70 who ate from the hand of Joseph will now eat from the hand of the Lord. And the two million who ate the manna and the quail and drank from the rock in the desert, all taking their food from his hand, and the 5,000 who were fed with five loaves and two fish, all eating from his hand, and all who ate his body and drank his blood, seated at the banquet table of the Lord himself, dishing out the finest meat and the choicest wine, and everyone, everyone, everyone will be satisfied. But until then, until that day comes, the cry goes out, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. And the angels all cry, manja, manja, amen. <laughs>